now we will very, have very, yeah. talk on post myocardial uh, vsr management by dr rk jain jain is a senior consultant cardiologist in kims i think everybody is familiar with him uh, i think you got exactly. uh, 5000 is finara so can you share my slide i have shared my slides already shared my screen they are visible okay let me share my slides are visible yeah, yeah. please go ahead okay so uh, welcome to hyderabad live and uh, sharat uh, does it with lot of uh, enthusiasm this uh, show every year and this time again he was very enthusiastic to do it in a big way and he's done in a big way yesterday is i told my talk to be kept today because yesterday the the flow of uh, tower was so good ajay was there sridhar was busy in the lab i thought you should not interrupt that flow and i told i'll talk to it tomorrow because this is anyhow it's not there in tower program so i took the time today so we just will discuss the management of some experience with us i think we should share with all the cardiologists and how to do this procedure everybody has this type of case in their practice and how to deal with them so just to basically to understand is everybody knows it's a devastating complication of mi high surgical mortality but now with availability of uh, good mechanical support and percutaneous uh, hemodynamic supports it has changed the paradigm of treatment the incidence in thrombolytic therapy was 1 to 3% and in uh, thrombolytic area it has reduced to 0.2 to 0.3% this is by antman's data and in primary pci still it occurs is 0.23% in primary pci there's a data from apex mi and uh, you should know understand that 4% of these patients will be in cardiogenic shock and uh, male is to female more common in males 3 is to 2 to 1 this is from crenshaw's data again and the number of vessels included in these patients who had uh, post myocardial ventricular septal ruptures single vessel in 50% of the time two vessel in 40% of the time three vessels in 10% of the time this from gusto data this is very important concept to understand that many people think vsd will have triple vessel is any first surgery but if we see more than 50% of the time it's a single vessel and that will be infarcted and no need to do the anything for that vessel this is why it is important and uh, enter mi uh, the vsr more common in enter mi and it can be simple or complex it can be single or multiple just before going to know we should understand this becker and wang magnetum classification uh, classification of this it is divided into type 1 type 2 and type 3 type 1 ruptures are slit like ruptures through the normal thickness myocardium occurring abruptly within 24 hours of mi this is very important second thing is becker's type 2 the rupture occurs typically subacutely from erosion of infarcted myocardium and associated with neutrophil infiltration and coagulation necrosis type 3 rupture result from perforation of a thin aneurysmal myocardial infarction in the last phase of mi and more frequently in the absence of reperfusion therapy so one is in the reperfusion within 24 hours can occur one delayed reperfusion the th second one in post pci it can occur so bimodal presentation occur occur within hours or within 3 to 5 days this should occur within hours this is also important that it can present bimodal these are the autopsy pictures if you see the first one is type 1 rupture 16 year old male myocardial hemorrhage treated with thrombolysis this occurs within few hours second one autopsy showed that type 2 ruptured myocardial hemorrhage and treated with pci type 3 is 87 year old type 3 rupture where there is no reperfusion therapy there is a thinning of the myocardium so these three types of rupture can occur again i want you to understand two types of vsds are there simple through and through defect usually located anteriorly that's the first echo picture and the second one is a complex one serpiginous uh, dissection tract remote from primary septal defect this is most common in inferior vsd this concept also is very important because if once you know this concept of simple and complex you will not try to do complex uh, vsrs by percutaneous method you better to send for surgery simple vsr you better try to do by vs uh, percutaneous method again the site of infarct equal distribution between anterior infarct and inferior infarct and if you do ct you will see lad vsrs are smaller thinner margins and surrounded entirely with septum the rca vsrs are complex associated with intramyocardial dissection involvement of the free, free wall so inferior vsrs are more difficult to treat anterior vsrs are easier to treat by percutaneous method these are the findings you can anyhow any patient you can miss by echocardiogram this vsrs but you can't miss by auscultation because the heart is systolic murmur so that's why importance of auscultation in any acute my patient because this vsr especially anteriorly and apically located you can miss 
by echocardiogram if the echocardiographer is not a smart one. This is the 30 day mortality for VSR with immediate surgical mortality and time delay. If you see, if we take this patient within first 24 hours, the mortality is 60%. And if we don't do anything, 90% mortality. But if they survive for seven days, the mortality reduced, surgical mortality reduced by 30%, uh, it's only 30%. Even if you do percutaneous uh, treatment within first uh, uh, seven days, the mortality is as high as 88%. Uh, so somehow if you can tell, make them survive for the seven days and either you do a surgery, surgery in fact you postpone it to 21 days and if you want to do, definitely the patient is little stable and at the, seven, at the end of seven days, is deteriorating, you take them up for either PC, uh, percutaneous approach or surgical approach. But the best will be, if they are survive for 21 days, but again, you may tell, but already in the natural history of VSR is over, you're taking a selective group of patients, there'll be a bias in this group of patients. But at least try to stabilize them first seven days and take them for either device or surgical closures. Again, multidisciplinary approach is important. You have to improve, uh, um, involve your heart team approach, hemodynamically unstable, either you can do immediately surgery. Again, I said, you do a, a on ECMO, delayed surgery. If the surgeon is not willing, you at least do try to do a percutaneous closure. Stable, hemodynamic stable, again, try to postpone more than seven days, either by IABP or ECMO, and then take up for either surgery or percutaneous method. Hemodynamic stable, delay as much as possible, and then go for surgery or for percutaneous support. This is from the European Society of Cardiology. Coming to the technique, first is the most important thing is create an AV loop. All the patient we should do by jugular approach right IJV, you can see the blue arrow is the right IJV and there's a catheter and we have pushed the wire from the left ventricle iota into the LV, if iota into the LV and then through the VSD into the pulmonary artery. This is the catheter to the pulmonary artery. And then second one is the snaring of this uh, wire. That's a very, very important step. This is how you snare the wire. And once you snare the wire, you exteriorize to the jugular vein and then you pass a delivery sheet along with the device and with the transthoracic echo and transesophageal echo, both you can see in this, both are there in this picture. You deploy the left atrial side if it's using ASD device, and then make sure it is aligned properly and the device is deployed properly. You release the device. This is the in short. I'll go to more pictures and what type of device you'll use, what situation. First is ASD occluder. All of us use this device very well, but whenever the VSD is more than 22, you use this device. And the only problem with the suboptimal device replacement because the right ventricular disc will not be aligned properly because of length of the waist. So you'll get more of a coba phenomenon with persistent shunting because the waist of the device is small, but you don't have a choice when the defect is more than 22, use the ASD device. Amplager muscular VSD device, where it is the, the, the two discs are connected by seven millimeter long waist when compared to the four millimeter waist in ASD device. You have sizes between 4 to 18 millimeters. Again, limitation is up to 18 only you can close. And the diameter needed for the sheet is 5 to 9 inch only. The best bin will be Amplager post-muscular VSD device. This is available in the country. And again, there's a long waist here. This is 10 waist here, available from 16 to 24. So the limitation will be up to only 20 million, 22 millimeters VSD device you can use. And 10 to 11 French sheet is used for delivery here. And this is some experience from our, some of the patients which we did. This was the patient we did in 2005. And you can see the VSD here, apical VSD. And this is the snaring of the wire from the jugular. And the patient is an intraatic balloon support. And then if you see, there's a kinking of this delivery sheet here. That's a common problem. We should know how to negotiate this kink. Otherwise, we can land in problems. The device will not be deployed. And then once you, we, we are able to negotiate, remove that kink here. And again, we got a second kink in the left ventricle here. We could negotiate the kink by pushing the device. And then this left atrial device is deployed here. And then we pull back the device into the septum, check the position. And then the device is deployed. And this is a final angiogram. You can see there is a mild residual stunt. The patient did very well, but died on the fourth day because by removing intraatic balloon pump, there was a common iliac rupture that was unfortunate. So with this uh, uh, first experience, then we went on to increase our more experience. This is again, um, uh, fifth case from our series. 
and this anterior MI and the day 15th of MI, as I said, more than seven days, your risk comes down. And there's a delivery sheet along with the loop into the AV loop into the LV and IOTA, and descending IOTA. And then the transesophageal guidance were deployed to the left atrial side of the disc here. And the disc looks stable. And then we pull back across the interventricular inter septum. And then we have deployed the right atrial side of the disc. This is again ASD device here. And this is a final picture. And this patient was discharged on day four. And he survived for 10 years. He underwent a left subclinical angioplasty in 2016. And he had a septumflex angioplasty in 2018. And he is still surviving 10 years. This is uh, another patient with anterior MI, no thrombolytic therapy, window period of 72 hours. Day six, IABP shock, and uh, this is a VSD, and this is a snaring of the wire, and you can see the snaring of the wire here. And you can see the delivery sheet going across in the AV loop. And what we did, it, we have taken extra support of the wire here when deploying the light, left atrial side of the disc, and then we're removing the, leaving the uh, uh, LV wire here and here we have used 22 millimeter ASD device. The patient developed post uh, procedure aseptic acalculus cholecystitis with sepsis was treated well and then this patient had two vessel disease and we have not done any PTCS stent and LED we left because non-viable and after three months we got back the patient to the lab and we did a PTCS stent to circumflex and the patient is surviving now and the fluoro time was 8.37 minutes in this procedure with a more experience what we have in this procedure. This is a case 9, primary PTC stent done to a lady in another hospital and after one week the patient developed antiseptal VSD and the patient was referred to our center and you can see that the, the, there is a difficulty in negotiating a large sheet uh, into the left ventricle here and then with the support of the wire, AV loop wire still we have kept wire and the device both. So by chance you are not able to device that, uh, deploy the device on the left ventricular side, we can renegotiate the seat. So need to do, no need to do the AV loop again, which saves the time and complications. And uh, this uh, was little oversized device we used here. And you can see that uh, left atrial side is quite big. You can see the VSD uh, uh, defect was small. We landed up using bigger device, but the final result is good. And this is a patient with a four-year follow-up. He's doing extremely well. This is a case 10 from our series, Antrival MI. And this we are trying to negotiate. These are the loops, the step. And here, what we have done is to get a better support, we have taken the sheet into the IOTA through the RA, RV, across the VSD, LV into IOTA to get a better support. And in this patient, we have not done any LV angio here. And uh, we have used a 16 millimeters uh, post MI vascular VSD here, post impact VSD device. And the fluoro time was 16 minutes here. And you can see the device deployment, which is kept in the IOTA, and then pull back into the LV and deploy the device here. And you can see the post MI muscular VSD device well positioned. And uh, this was just done in TT and TE guidance. And that's one of the important uh, learning experience we had, uh, but not to do LV angio in this group of patients because already they're in cardiorenal syndrome with low cardiac output and they will not do well. And this is a three years follow-up of this patient. And the patient is doing fine. So let us see some of the complications uh, uh, we had. Uh, this is again a 74 LMI, anterior MI, 15 days duration. This we did uh, last uh, December, and this is a VSD here. And you can see we have done this to the femoral approach here uh, with a more experience. I think there was some issue with the jugular here. That's why we did the femoral. And again, if you see the delivery sheet, we're tracking across the IOTA again here to get a better support and angiogram shunned down a single vessel disease as it is infarcted. We never tried to correct it here. And you can see this amount of support we get by keeping the device in the left ventricle outflow track into the IOTA. And uh, we got a small king when uh, negotiating the device. And you can see the device is deployed here again. And there's a ASD device here. And uh, we have done without identity balloon support. 
and 17 millimeters pleuro time, 20 mil to millimeters age device be used, and the patient is last six months follow up is doing very fine. I'll uh, show some of the complications. So this is a final result. So I just want to share you with the inferior my VSD. Again, you can see the echo short serpentinous VSD. And uh, initially, we never know that we can land in problems with these VSDs. And you can see again the serpentinous VSD, and it is nearer to the uh, mitral apparatus and to the tricuspid wall here. But initial enthusiasm, we thought we should try to do this. So this is a VSD here, the serpentinous VSD here, and uh, we were able to cross with the delivery sheet and. Uh, we were able to deploy the device, but then the device came back. So we recaptured the device and entered into LV again. And this is second recapture here. Uh, we couldn't deploy the device well, and uh, we had a lot of issues because the device was not uh, uh, aligning properly with the VSD. This is second recapture. And this is a third recapture, and we deployed the device. And if you see the way the device is deployed here, and this was this we did long 10 years back. And after this uh, learning, and the patient we lost within 24 hours, we decided not to touch inferior my VSD. So uh, that, that's a big lesson we learned. And then the literature came now also telling that better don't touch the like, inferior my VSD, they don't do well. So this is one experience we gained. And uh, other complications of VSD, I'll just go through quickly. Uh, even though the device was deployed well, there was infarct expansion here. And, uh, and you can see after the device was deployed, there was worsening of the VSD. And this patient also we lost uh, uh, within six days. Another complication, if you see there was a large VSD with a severe RV dysfunction, LV dysfunction. And uh, this was done in 2015. We didn't have ECMO support at that time. So probably these patients you have done with the ECMO support, the patient would have survived and this patient also we lost. And this is our experience with the VSD closure. We last uh, uh, 10 years and uh, we can see the initial experience. We had a lot of mortality here and uh, the till 2015 or 30 day survival rate was only 35%. That is one out of six cases we lost. But with the gaining more experience and learning what not to do, from 2016-2020, 30-day survival is 80%. That is, we lost only one case of the last five cases we did. So this is how now overall our survival is 45%. But if you see the last five cases, we lost only one. The survival is 80%. So this we published in Indian Heart Journal, our experience in 2017. Uh, these are the only first uh, six cases we published after that we didn't publish. Summarizing, contraindications, more than 35 mm defect. Uh, there will be high risk. Epileg VSD without rim, don't do it. Basal VSD, that is inferior MI VSD, better to avoid. Post MI um, uh, muscular VSD device you want to use, don't use if it is more than 24. 14 days mortality is less, so if you can stabilize, always uh, take this patient at the time. And this is selection bias, but that's your at least procedure will be good. 30 day mortality, more than 70 years female, the mortality high, you, high. Inotrope use, intraatic balloon pump use, shock, they don't do well. Time to VSR, less than seven weeks, they don't do well. Device implantation during acute phase, they don't do well. Residual VST is okay. But if you do medal score, if INR is excluded, if it's more than 20, they don't do well. 30-day mortality is 66%, more with shock. So the current device and implantation procedure limitations is, one is serpingous VSR, inferior MI, better not to do in this group of patients. You should have a good delivery, rigid delivery sheath, crossing, kinking, tearing borders of VSR connector, RT-venous loop, exteriorized to manipulate both ends of the wire to avoid wire tension effect and VSR, cheese cutter effect connector. Need to rewire and snade and create loop again. So use a double wire technique, 3 5 and 1 8 wire. Use 1 8 as a spare wire so that you need not do the heavy loop again. And whenever there is a large ventricular subture, rupture, use ASD device and the residual stent is acceptable in this group of patients. So future cases, how will I do it? The 10 points, remember what a little experience I have from these procedures is our group. Avoid inferior MI VSR for transeptal closure because they are serpentinous. The mitral and tricuspid wall nearby, they should not try to attempt. 
two limited corner views probably two views for each side don't use more than 30 ml contrast and please remember there is no need for immediate revascularization in this patient as infarct related his artery is non viable and they already please understand that and don't try to revascularize non culprit infarct related vascularization you can wait you take the data from culprit shock you take the data from the culprit trial they all say non infarct nothing will happen leave them alone and understand the main pathology in vsr is mechanical problem just correct it the patient will do well and try to avoid an lv angio pre and post procedure use transthoracic echo and use a transesophageal echo there is enough already i keep on telling low cardiac output cardio renal syndrome they are just maintaining the renal perfusion don't worsen it by doing too many angios heart team approach give them option of first always so that they'll be comfortable that you something happens legally you at least have taken an opinion from your ct team involve a good pediatric international cardiologist they are very good in maintaining the av loop or at least one of your colleagues should be good in maintaining the av loop they should be able to track both the wires so that the uh, delivery sheet goes in easily without any problems and what i feel the systematically refer this vsr to centers with good experience with the device closures or already have a lot of experience so that the again uh, the patients uh, will not be lost with some issues in this uh, group of patient and uh, i thank my colleagues vadmalaban sudeep pravikhant and pa jivani dr dasagaro and shrinath and our ct surgeon dr bhaskar rao and his team and assistia team dr naresh our technician led by raja our echo technicians led by aruna and all my cardiac referral cardiologists and most important to my patients and all my icc nursing staff and last one most important my dnb students who take care of this patient post procedure thank you very much table release ah, thank right. you jayan please such a beautiful series of cases which are put a short stint into that highly uh, informative and educative